It is the early 21st century. The same conservative political faction, the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, has remained in power near constantly since 1955. The country's population is declining as less and less young people have the stability to start families. traditional salary man, the Japanese worker who remains employed by the same company for life, is dying. In the 90s, Japan had faced its lost decade. Now it's home to an entire lost generation. As of 2015, to quote Bloomberg, 3.4 million people in their 40s and 50s were not married and lived with their parents. Meanwhile, that same year, the corrupt Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his cabinet introduced the Peace and Security Preservation Legislation in May of 2015, a controversial act that was criticized by Nagasaki bomb survivor Sumiteru Taniguchi as risking a return for Japan's defense force back to the wartime period. Without enough opposition party members in power, the bill finally becomes a law over public protests and expert claims of it being unconstitutional in September. This was the state of Japan at the time of Persona 5 developed by Atlas Games, which debuted in 2016. It was not only a politically timely, excellently crafted JRPG, As I'll argue in this video essay, Persona 5 featured one of the greatest game soundtracks, maybe in history. And it's because of how well the music serves as the Broadway-esque connective tissue between the story, the political commentary, and the wider themes. It doesn't just describe modern Japan. The game takes aim at a socio-political status quo that is spread everywhere, arguably thanks at least in part to globalization. The original Persona 5's opening number is called Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There. According to head songwriter Shoji Meguro, the music for Persona 5 was only written after some preliminary work on the script, the world, and the artwork. With lyrics by Japanese songwriter Benjamin Franklin, set to visuals directed by Yuri on Ice's Sayo Yamamoto, Wake Up is the perfect introduction to the phantasmic theatricality of the coming game. With visuals deeply indebted to one of Persona 5's apparently biggest influences, George Orwell's 1984, we're shown a police state looking modern Tokyo intercut with images of our protagonists skating over it all as they graffiti the walls. The song introduces a number of motifs and themes, both musically, lyrically, and conceptually, that we'll hear and see repeated throughout the rest of the game. Though many other game scores utilize recurring motifs, of course, not many have so many songs set to lyrics like Persona 5. Not even previous games in the series had so many, in fact. We're given a sense of the, if you will, persona at the heart of the game, too. That of the playful trickster, the Kaito, or Phantom Thief. With its riveting acid jazz sound, Wake Up serves as a political clarion call designed to stir the player listener into action. As the name of the track conveys, Persona 5 wants more than a typical passive player audience. The game hopes to spark some real inspiration in its presumed young player base. Inspiration to, as the title says, wake up, get up, get out there, and change the world. A world whose status quo has increasingly become fixed due to globalization. The song does musically and lyrically what our plucky group of protagonists, the Phantom Thieves, will repeatedly do to the twisted hearts of corrupt power mongers and the broken hearts of apathetic masses throughout the game. It speaks truth to power in a heart-poundingly intense and joyful way, nothing short of electrifying. Vocalist Lin Inaizumi bids us to break out of our Orwellian mental prison in the song, to awaken our rage at the system and at the people who've stolen our future, who are running or at least benefiting from the status quo. Wake up, get up, get up there. Your 
He sings, raise your voice against liars. Feed your anger like fire. Why does nobody want change? The Phantom Thieves are heroes for a twisted dark age, and the opener is designed to make us want to be them. As we see our main character is blissfully sliding across the screen, Inaizumi calls on us to just imagine you're up there, swatting lies in the making, can't move fast without breaking, if you hold on, life won't change. Notice the wordplay of swapping out flies for lies. It's a powerful opening number that starts a conversation that will be picked back up by following songs. The theatrical jazz and Phantom Thief style chord changes bring us into the beautiful neon darkness that is Persona 5. But in the scenes that are set during the mundane, everyday world, the music often takes on a completely contrasting tone, sounding downbeat, even maudlin. The Phantom Thief, after all, is just a persona, a mask, and underneath the mask, as the song is named, there's still a real person forced to endure modern life, forced to wear another kind of mask, a mask of conformity, an apathetic resignation. It isn't easy being a hero, nor, apparently, is it any easier being a civilian. In Persona 5, the heroes and civilians alike are often not just thankless, they are outcasts. They are the dispossessed and the wrongfully accused. They are, in short, the quintessential characters of modern youth, of modern life. And all this, too, is conveyed musically. Behind the mask's title is a nod to the lyrics of Wake Up, which implored us to take the mask off and be free. Behind the mask, to complement this idea by contrasting with it, depicts the loneliness and misery of life stuck behind the mask. The mask society forces young people, if not everyone, to wear and never take off. The real question to be asked, where have I been? I'm a chef chef too. In the chorus, Inaizumi mournfully sings, I'm a shapeshifter at Poe's Masquerade. This is a nod to the short story by Edgar Allan Poe, Mask of the Red Death. In the story, a group of aristocrats hole up in a beautiful apartment while the Red Death, a plague, ravages the world. They party as hard as possible at a masquerade ball to cowardly hide from the truth. It is only when a mysterious and phantasmic stranger, draped in the persona of the Red Death itself, appears, revealing nothing behind its mask at all, nothing but the Red Death made flesh, that one by one the wealthy ball guests succumb to the truth they refuse to face in time. Beneath the Mask plays out as an extended literary reference to Edgar Allan Poe's haunting classic, as the narrator in the song deals with the sense of nothingness that stalks behind every mask, every persona, every so-called true identity. This is of course a theme inherent to every persona game in one way or another, that there is no real you in the Buddhist sense, that there is no genuine self, only forms, only personas, only the suffering of masks. But with the third major song we'll cover from the game, we find a repeated phrase from the opener as well, with another quotation in the title, Life Will Change. It also shares some of the first track's melody as well. Life Will Change usually plays on your way to take on the current shitty adult whose heart the Kaito are trying to steal. And fittingly so, the lyrics are a lot more confrontational, the rhythm and melody, while familiar, more dark and theatrical. Life will change can only be described as the sound of the old system's coming destruction. As the phantom thieves, no phantom or figment of the system's ailing old mind, we're told, can't be stopped as they multiply and come to claim their rights in a spectacle of shock and awe. This is a story of asymmetrical psychological warfare, and as life will change as lyrics and sound conveys, it can only be waged by sneak attacks, guerrilla tactics to strike at the heart and mind. 
in Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There, Inaizumi implored us to find ourselves in the debris. Imagine we're up there, swatting lies in the making, and advised us if we hold on, life won't change. In Life Will Change, she sings about how these ideas have now, for the Phantom Thieves, come closer to a reality. Now we've swatted those lies in the making, we've fought it out in the debris, past tense, and now we know that life will change. This is the kind of musical theater sensibility so apparent in Persona 5 that few, if any, games before it or since have even tried. All the same themes and styles return in the fourth song we'll discuss, Last Surprise. Usually the game's battle theme, Last Surprise, is another weapon of psychological warfare against the system, a warning for what the Kaito have in store. It's another song ostensibly designed to make us want to be the Kaito, to show us how to become the heroes we so admire, by subverting the system and its norms, by taking advantage of our enemy's own ubiquitous power. Locked inside a single way of seeing the world, just as we were before in Wake Up, we were told there is more to life than their way. If you do live, you cannot stay. Our enemy cannot imagine any other way of living. But that is what makes them blind to our attack, we who have made this sacrifice. Blind to what will become their last surprise, as we take our futures and the meaning of our lives back. And that brings us to the last song we'll cover for this video, the triumphant Rivers in the Desert. The title is meant to be a prima facie paradox, a word game like so much of the writing in Persona 5. After all, a desert is defined by a lack of water. Rivers in the Desert is meant to imply a paradigm shift by tricksters who have no problem dwelling in the inherent contradiction of the phrase. It's meant to imply a sacrifice of the self today to build an inhabitable tomorrow where now there is nothing but wasteland. Building on a pulsating, driving beat, the song informs us it's coming at the moment of truth. It's a portrait of the showdown with reality and the system that every song before now has merely alluded to. Still plagued by the red death-like sense of self-doubt, of a sense of the fleeting capriciousness of images and forms, of masks, the song portrays our leap of faith, a summoning of Kaito-sized courage. protagonists square off against a nameless he, a stand-in for what the song calls the bosses of greed and fear. As the protagonists are willing to bear the pain of a singeing desert to create new life, to create rivers in a desert. But just as Orwell wrote in 1984, the ultimate conflict invariably is one that plays out within the self. The singer longs for the cool of an oasis to clear their head of anger and greed. Of what Orwell might have called the hideous ecstasy of fear. We need the burning of our feet, the pain of today, the emptiness of a heartbeat for a tin man, an allusion the song is making of course to Wizard of Oz, all in order to overthrow the endless frozen presence of the powers that be, all in order to create new life, a chance at a new beginning. Persona 5 is a heartfelt, deeply moving, and romantic, even gothic call to arms. It calls on the player to throw off our passivity, our masks, 
and to look to the Kaito as more than beloved characters, as role models, as other kinds of masks that we can temporarily don to challenge the system, challenge our oppressors, and to do so with tenacity and courage, with guile and style. From its many literary and other intertextual allusions to its recurring musical, lyrical, and thematic motifs, from its musical theater foundations to its story and gameplay, which of course could only ever work as a video game, Persona 5 is a crowning achievement for the medium at large. Here's hoping we can all follow its example and find the courage in our globalized, modern dystopia to wake up, get up, get out there. Till next time, boss. Gotta clear my head up. Find some